What's up everybody, my name is Victor Oyedeji and I'm going to show you how to set up your email using Zoho. So in a previous video, I showed you how to get a free business email like info at yourdomainname.com. This video, I'm going to show you how to actually send and retrieve emails with your new business email. So right here, I'm in the admin console. So in the last video, I use a domain name called comprandom.com and the email that I have, if I was to go to users, the email that I have is info at comprandom.com. So that is the email that I set up. Yours will obviously be different. The admin console is not where you are going to retrieve and send emails. You have to go somewhere else when you use Zoho. That somewhere else is you want to click on a new tab and you want to go to mail.zoho.com, mail.zoho.com. And if this is your first time going in, it is going to basically put you into this page and it will automatically log you in. If you are not automatically logged in, so let me actually close this and let me actually close this admin console and sign out. So let's say you're completely signed out. What do you do? You will go to, once again, mail.zoho.com. And then from here, you will click on sign in on the right side where it says sign in. So go to sign in. On this page, this is where you would add the new email address that you just created with Zoho. So this is your free business email address. So for me, I use info at, this is what I use, comp random, which is short for completely random, dumb.com. Yours is gonna be different. Click on next and then put the password that you created. And if you did not create a password, which I don't think I did, but if you did not create a password, then you wanna go to forgot password and then go from there. But let me sign in. Okay, I did create a password. So the password, I'm assuming it's gonna be the same that you use to create your Zoho account. All right. So now I am in the mail.zoho.com and this page, I'm actually going to bookmark this page. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to bookmark it and I'm going to call this Zoho Mail or you can call it your business name. So for me, it will be comp random, comp random mail and then save it. But you definitely want to save this page. You're going to be here 98% of the time. This is where you're actually going to be. So now this is where you can send and receive emails, but I want to give you the settings that I use that is similar to Gmail's. Just follow what I do step-by-step. Step. And this is what I do for all of my business emails as well. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go on the top right where this little gear button is, it says settings. You wanna click that. And this is where we're going to update some stuff. And I don't remember all the settings off my head, so I'm gonna use another Zoho account that I have for one of my other businesses. And I'm going to basically copy those settings here. Just, just follow along. You wanna scroll down and the font family, Lotto, you can use any one that you want. I like Lotto. Theme color, now this you can change this to any one of these colors. And if you can see on the left side, whatever theme that you have, the buttons change. So it can be anything that you want. Blue is fine, green is fine. I'm going to pick green for the purposes of this tutorial, but you can choose blue, doesn't matter. And then you can also make it night mode or light mode. That completely depends on you. I'm just going to keep it on light mode. All right, so let me scroll down. And by the way, make sure that system on the left side is highlighted. All right, so you want to scroll down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uncheck where it says enable smart create menu. Uncheck that part. Keep scrolling down and that is basically it. So the next thing is keyboard shortcuts, skip that. Go to integrations. So all these integrations that is there, we are going to remove basically almost everything. So to do that, you wanna scroll all the way down to the very bottom and everywhere it says enable, just disable them. Now we do not need these. These are all like Zoho buildings, Zoho sprints. Everywhere that says enable, disable, if you click it and it goes to something like this, then just go back. Uh, let me go back to where it says like Zoho sign. If I actually need to click on it, it'll show that. Just go back and get out of there. Or you can even click disable right here on the right side. 
same thing. But you want to basically go back, scroll all the way down, and disable all of this. Zoho Recruit, Zoho People, Zoho Notebook, Zoho This, Zoho That, Zoho Everywhere, Zoho Anywhere. Just remove all this. Let me go back. So just make sure you disable all this. You just want less things that's there. Where it says configure, just skip all that. Where it says um, enable, disable, 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 disable. Unless there's something here that you need, like Zendesk. If you need Zendesk to go with Zoho, then go ahead and do that. Um, but disable OneDrive, disable um, Jira, that's for collaboration, we'll need that. Google Drive, you may keep that. So we keep that for now. Dropbox, we might keep that. And in Box, if you want to keep that, you can if you want. I'm going to keep these enabled. I'm not going to need it right now, but you can click on Learn More, like under like Google Drive, for example. You can click on Learn More, and you basically have to do some authentication and things like that. So if you do want me to do something like this and show you how to integrate Google Drive with Zoho, let me know, and I might make a video on how to do that. All right, but really, just really follow these steps. I'm assuming that's how you do that, but you know, with tech, you never know. It's not always as straightforward. But I mean, let me go back, and that is it. So I really just left Box, Dropbox, and Google Drive enabled, and that is the end of that. So once that is done, you want to go to where it says Mail, and Mail View Options. And now this is where we're getting into the nitty gritty. It's where it gets important. So right here, Open Message, I'm going to keep it as Vertical Preview. When a message comes up, it will appear on the right side. You click on the message on the left, it appears on the right. So then from here, it says after, actually, let me see something real quick. Uh, oh yeah, there was a setting I forgot in the very beginning. Man, I almost forgot the first setting. So the very first setting, when starting up, you want to go to land me in mail inbox. So the very first setting where it says setting, make sure that land me in mail inbox, make sure this is checked. All right, now go back to mail view options. Let's go back to that. All right, so when you scroll down, you want to keep all this the same right here. Um, but one thing you want to change, load external images, click always. So anytime an image goes to email, it will always load. Then from here, sort folder, you want to make this manually. That's very important. That means that all of your folders will just manually be there, it will not be sorted automatically. So, sorry, not automatically, alphabetically. Afterwards, I think, oh, right here. Show hide comment box for emails, hide comment box. If you have a show, it will confuse you when you write emails because you're gonna see two boxes. You don't wanna be confused on that. All right, and then from here, let me continue to go down. I think that is it. Now I'll go to compose. All right, so now when you compose, so this is where you actually write your emails. From here, you want to open Compose in a new tab. You can do a new window if you want, but I prefer a new tab. That's just personally me. Okay, so now you want to scroll down and make sure everything else is the same for your replies. I kept this the same. That's fine. Now, here's where it gets important. So font options. So I like to use Arial. This is where it was different from the last time I did a video like this. So use Arial and the font size, I personally use 12. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger text when you write your email. You can also use 11, but you don't see 11 here. So what you would do is you literally click on here, you go to the very bottom, go to the very bottom, click on that, and you can actually choose your own number if you click on a pencil and you can choose 11 if you want. I personally would do 12. And the reason why is that if I was to write an email with this size and send it to Gmail, it would actually kind of show regular size on Gmail. But if I was to do it on the size that they gave me, and if I send it to Gmail, the text would be real small. So you don't want that to happen. So you definitely want it size 12 or size 11. I'm gonna use size 12. It may be a little bit bigger when people receive it in different emails, but that's fine because the larger the text, the easier it is to read anyway. So that's the end of my soapbox on that. Now from here where it says undo interval. So this is after you send your email, how long should it you know, basically wait before the email sends? So I did five seconds. You can do 10 seconds if you want. So after the sends, you have 10 seconds to not send the email. It's up to you. You can do anywhere from five to 30 seconds. I'm gonna do five, actually I might do 10 seconds actually just to make sure if I sent the email 
I got 10 seconds to basically go back and say, no, nah, let me undo that. Gmail already has that feature. So now we have it on Zoho. Add recipients to contacts. So if you want to save the contacts of the people who you send the emails out to, leave this checked. But I'm going to check it for my purposes. So I'm going to leave it unchecked. All right. And then right here, show CC field in Compose. CC means carbon copy. So I'm going to uncheck to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to uncheck show CC in field in Compose. Now you can still add carbon copy when you write your emails. You just have to click on add carbon copy. You want to uncheck that. Unchecking it makes that happen. This should automatically be unchecked. All right. And I think that is, oh, and then reminder to follow up and send the emails. Prompts you to add a follow up reminder when sending emails with selective keywords. I'm going to uncheck that as well. I don't need that. And let me see. I think that is it. That is basically it. Next thing you want to do is you want to go to conversation. So conversation view, keep this as it is, no problem. And then start conversation. If you want the newest conversation to be on top, click newest on top. If you want the oldest conversation to be on top, click oldest on top. And you know, that's that. I'm going to select newest on top. All right. So once we are done, next thing you want to do is you want to go to send mail as. So look for it says send mail as, and this is where you can change the name, your display name of your outgoing email. You can make it your, your first name, last name, full name, your company name, whatever the case is. I'm going to make it for me. I'm going to say comp random or completely random, which was the name of my, um, the company I decided to start completely random. So I'm going to update that. All right. And then that's that. And then finally, you want to go to signature right here. Go to signature. And from here, this is where you would add your signature. So what I usually do is you need to have a signature name. This is very, very important. I'm going to say, uh, you can say whatever company name, but I would say for me, um, random signature. What you need to name your signature, you can name it Lisa's signature or Victor's signature or whoever signature, but you want to have a signature and you can save multiple signatures if you want. But for now, just do the first signature. And then what I usually like to do is I like to make my font to be the same as what it was. So Arial and 10 point font is fine. I know last time I said I went to 12 in my actual email, but for the signature, 10 point font will work. Then I usually do enter and then I say my name. I'll say Victor and I'll probably say founder completely <laughs> random. And then I might have email that's there. So email equals uh, info at comprandom.com. And then you can put your website if you want to as well. Uh, let me bold uh, completely random just because. But however you do your signature, that will work. All right. And then place signature above quote of content. Leave that there. So right here, this is where it's important. This has to show your email. If this does not show, then this does not work. You would not have a signature when you send an email. Go back to associated from address for new emails. You want to go to that and that is that. So click on save. And so now I have a signature that is called comp random signature. But let's say I want to have another signature. So I would click on signature in the top right, right here, add new. And then now a new signature, I must name this. So I would say Victor's signature. All right. And then from here, I'll hit enter. And I will say Victor uh, once again. And I will say founder completely random. Email and info at completely comp random, which is um, dot com, which is what I own. And then that's that. So it's the same thing that I did. But now what's different is that I have to have an associated from email address. So I'm going to select this. And then when I do that and hit save, what happens now is if I go back to my comp random signature, which is this, and I will probably say, I'll say info. So completely random info. Then I will go and so now I've updated that. But if I was to go back to my signature, the associated from address, now it's gone. Before it was selected, now it's gone. So you can only have one email associated per signature. So if I was to go ahead and click this and skip this part and click update, 
Now, if I went back to my signature right here, my associated from address is gone. But if I click here, now it's there. You can only have one. So I recommend you just have one if you want. Let me actually remove my own signature by clicking this trash can, click OK, and that is that. And that is basically it. So let me get out of here. And now if I was to click on new mail on the left side, so as you can see from subject, let me say to, and let me actually email myself. And on the right side, this is where you can add CC and you can add BCC, which is blind carbon copy if I wanted to. So I can still add it. And then from here, I would say, this is a test. And then go down and I would say, this is a test to see if this works. All right, this is pretty big. So I'm gonna make that small in a second. All right, so let me actually send this to myself. And these emails that you get, these initial emails, I can go ahead and highlight it and then delete all that. I don't need none of that. All right, and it's in trash. And on the left side, this is where you can check your new emails and stuff like that. And your streams, I'm not gonna do any streams, so I'm going to click on the word streams to remove that. Okay, so now that I have done that, let me go to my email. And now I have gotten a new email from Gmail from completely random. He said, this is the test, this is the test to see if it works. So I can send email, that's great. Now let me reply to this, and I will say, got it. Hit send, and now let me go back, and now that is sent, if I was to refresh the page, well, I didn't even have to refresh it. I have replied, this is a test. So if I click here, and it pulls up on the side, so my initial email was right here, and then they got it right there, that's what it shows, and I can even close this. So let me actually reply one more time and say, wonderful, and then hit send. And so now my inbox, it shows, that I have this, but if I was to go back to my email right here, let me go ahead and click my name, and you can see it says wonderful at the bottom, so it did reply, and I will say, reply one more time, and I will say great. All right, and then that is that. So let me go back to my inbox. It shows my latest email at the bottom. So if you wanted to have exactly how like Gmail has it, then you would go back to your settings. That was a gear icon, by the way and you will go to conversation and then oldest on top. So you wanna have the oldest conversation on top. So if you do that, and then let me go back and click on where inbox and click this. So now the oldest conversation is at the top. I actually prefer this similar to Gmail, no problem. And then if I was to reply, so hit reply right here. If I hit reply right here, it would go at the bottom. This goes at the very top, that's a little different. So I think that is that. And then as far as this, the signature, you can go right here to settings, go to signature at the very bottom. This signature, let me actually update it to make it 10 point font right there to make it small. Click on update, that's fine. And then if I was to go back to inbox, click it, and then go to apply, now I can type and say, I am done. And then you can have your info at the bottom right there and that is it. So now that I've done this, I can go back to my inbox, show this, it shows all my conversations. The next thing I wanna do is to go back to my admin section. I will click on my face, where it says my profile, go to admin console, and now, since I'm the main user, I will go back to the admin console right here. And this is where you can add more users if you want. So you can have like Vic at completerandom.com or your name at your domain name.com, whatever the case is, and you can do all that. And every single person will have their own zoho.com email to work with. And that is that. So on the next video, I'm going to show how to add Zoho on your phone. So anytime somebody emails, you will get an automatic email on your phone. And you can also apply there as well. So stay tuned. And thank you for sticking to the end of this video.